Long before Ben Murray Bruce ventured into politics, he had always loved to debate on issues dear to his heart. Issues that make common sense. If you have children and they want to become lawyers and judges, teach them to seek justice and not a judgeship. If you have children who want to become doctors, teach them to seek public health and not personal wealth. If you have children who want to become teachers, teach them to teach for a living and not because they can't help it. If you have children who want to become priests and imams and preachers, teach them to prophesy and not profiteer. If you have children who want to live in this country, teach them to become upright citizens. There is dignity in labor. There is dignity in whatever you do in life. 68 naira or 30 cents is the minimum wage of the Nigerian worker an hour. And yet, we lay claim to being the world's 22nd largest economy. Policymakers and politicians need to realize that a world-class workforce need to earn competitive incomes to compete in the global space. If I could have a Nigerian celebrity as president, it would be Ben Murray Bruce. And the reason is, first of all, I'd balance the budget. Two, I'll cut recurrent expenditure to no more than 50% of the budget. Three, I'll make sure we go green. I'll make sure that we focus on the youth. I'll make sure we focus on education. I'll make sure we focus on health care. I'll make sure we focus on welfare. And once we do that, and we start acting like Nigeria is not as wealthy as we think it is, then we'll have some common sense and we start looking after our country. So it came as no surprise that he was destined to turn his oratorical skills into public good someday. For 32 years, we worked for the government. Governments are not known to employ producers, but we endured. We have become cut jesters to our slave masters. We are citizens of Nigeria, and we have a higher calling than just to get a job. Whatever we do in life means something to us. You want to sing, you want to dance, you want to act, you want to run, you want to jump, you want to throw the shot put. You can be somebody. You want to play soccer? Daddy Shoki, Daddy Shoki could have been dead. Daddy Shoki could have been an area boy. But today he's a celebrity. And because he's a celebrity, he gives us hope. And if he gives us hope, we have a chance to make a difference. You must never look down on anybody because the man you look down upon will be the next president of Nigeria. Aha! The people sat bucket. The spirits are we cannot produce 30 percent or 40 percent of the oil and live in abject poverty that must change everybody smile rejoice oh, when the right man is on that seat oh what a peace of mind he's been working for the peace with money's own as a person like i remember 2010 the day he made that speech of life vote for service vote for social welfare advocacy vote for real change vote for pdp vote ben Murray bruce for senate ben Murray bruce let there be light so when the opportunity knocked to serve his people it was welcomed with open arms after polling a total of 88,455 votes to defeat his closest rival and former Bayelsa state governor, Tim Silva of the APC, Ben Murray Bruce was on his way to represent the good people of Bayelsa East Senatorial District at the 8th Senate in Abuja, Nigeria. A policy of having a great military, great police force, policing the rich with barbed wire, fence house and bulletproof cars is not the solution to grow the Nigerian economy. To grow the economy and to provide jobs, we must have fewer people. When I was in university, I was in university, my professor asked us a question. He said, are the Jews the chosen people? Everybody in the class I was 18 years old was quiet. He said, are the Jews the chosen people? And he said, let, let us analyze that question. They said, the average Jewish family has 1.5 children per family. The average education of a Jew is maybe a master's degree. But what do we have? What is the average education of a Nigerian? So because there are fewer people, they focus on technology, they grow the economy. With fewer people, they have an advanced economy in, 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 in an environment that is not so conducive for great development. But we think having babies 
is equivalent to wealth, is equivalent to success, is equivalent to development, is counterproductive. His victory at the polls marked the continuation of his life of advocacy after a stint as the Director General of the Nigeria Television Authority. If the federal government will not recognize a fundamental problem in our educational system, a fundamental problem on how television is viewed across the country, then we have a fundamental problem. Senator Ben Murray Bruce's arrival at the 8th Assembly in May 2015 saw him among the most vibrant senators who rode through the pillars of the Red Chambers. From the genesis of his legislative journey, Senator Ben Murray Bruce was a delight to watch. He did not mince words, he brought color and relief to the process. You have to go back to history to understand why there was a civil war in the first place and 50 years later, why the same people are agitating for independence. In 66, we had the first coup where it was alleged that the Igbos wiped out northern leaders in the military. Second coup, Gawan took over, and there was a lot of bloodshed killing the Igbos. Igbos were killed in the north. They moved back to eastern Nigeria. Ujuku became head of state, declared a nation called Biafra. The war started. We fought for three years. The war was over. And southeastern Nigeria and eastern Nigeria, as was called, was integrated into Nigeria. Besides his legislative duties, Senator Ben Murray Bruce is social media compliant and internet savvy. His activism online and offline is widely recognized for instilling a positive change in people's lives through his common sense editorials. Never one to shy away from controversies on social media. Even the executive arm of government has not been spared of his open criticisms on issues without fear of being labeled anti-government. What is the business of the government with the hairstyles of our youth? Why forcefully shave the hair of young men who want to look stylish? Government should be more concerned with what is going on into the heads of these youngsters instead of what they wear on their heads. Albert Einstein defines insanity as doing the same things and expecting different results. If Nigeria keeps doing the same thing, nothing will change and our university system will continue to decay and produce half-baked graduates. The Biafra war is long over, but the only way to ensure that it never happens again is to treat those who were involved with justice. Nigerians do not need a handout. What they need is a hands up. The best way to leave Nigerians out of poverty is not by giving out 10,000 naira to the poor. The poor need two things, education and capital. We must save our educational sector and the privatization of our universities is a solution that we must consider sooner than later. We must deal a decisive blow to the bandits in Zamfara who have made themselves into the law and at the same time the oppressors. If we do not restore law and order in Zamfara, like cancer, it will spread till the whole country is affected. Life as we know it does not exist in many parts of the state. Our leaders are not Nigerians. Our leaders are white men in black skin. Our leaders are no different from the British colonial masters. They just happen to be black with Nigerian names. But that's who they are. They don't think Nigeria, they don't act Nigeria, they're arrogant, and they don't care about the people. In line with his activist roles, Senator Ben Murray Bruce was one of the few PDP senators who protested at the gate of the National Assembly on August 7th, 2018, when mass security men besieged the federal legislature's premises and prevented people from getting into the National Assembly. It has come to our attention that our colleagues cannot go to work after we adjourned for our summer holidays. We have been informed that the APC senators are attempting to effect a change of leadership. This is anti-democratic, against the law, and against the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This morning, I have been in touch with the American Embassy. I will be in touch with the European Union. I will be in touch with Great Britain. I will be in touch with Canada. In my conversations with these embassies and these countries, I want to make it clear, we are going to ask these Western democracies to revoke the visas of anybody leading 
this assault on this institution. We're at a position where the hunted are now killing the hunters, and the hungry are now killing the well-fed, and the poor are now killing the rich. And this is what we've been talking about for a long time. We're a nation of 200 million, maybe. I don't think Nigerians even know the true population of Nigeria. We're not paying attention to the most important part of Nigeria. And let me explain. For our people to be unemployed, to, to be employed, the economy has to grow at 15% for about 30 years to employ every Nigerian living today. Our reaction to employ them in government is counterproductive. It does two things. One, it increases the budget, which means there's less money for social intervention. Successive governments in Nigeria have run away from the fundamental issues affecting Nigeria. One, what are population control policies? Does anybody care how many children we have? Does anybody care how many children we ought to have? How many children make up an economy that is truly functional? Nobody cares. So we all talk about the issue, but we avoid what is truly important population control policies. Now, we don't have to be as draconian as China, where they have a one-child policy, but a one-child policy in China helps stabilize the Chinese economy. And they can grow at seven, eight, nine percent Muslims and Christians will criticize me for my position, but unless this government and all governments have a, con a, a, a population control policy, one, we cannot solve the problem. Two, we must spend more money on education. Right now, we have a choice. We either buy books or we buy bombs. We either buy books or we buy bullets. We, we are buying more bullets, four times more bullets than we are buying books. If we don't educate our people, we have to kill them. If you don't kill them, they'll kill you. So you have a choice. Educate them or get killed or kill them. His achievements at the National Assembly are quite outstanding and very remarkable. In less than four years compared to other efforts of many long-standing legislators. Senator Ben Murray Bruce was able to sponsor over 10 bills on the floor of the Senate. Most notable among them are the Independent Prosecutors Bill, the Ward Security Bill, as well as the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act Bill of 2016, among others. It gives me great pleasure to read the lead debate on a bill for an act to phase out petrol vehicles in 2035 and introduce electric cars, SB 726. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, permit me to lead this debate on this all-important bill. The bill was first read on the floor of the hallowed chambers on the 10th of April, 2019. Distinguished colleagues, I chose to present this bill for two major reasons. First is that combustion engine cars have caused and continue to cause several deaths in our country through uncontrolled pollution. Secondly, we have been spending over one trillion naira annually subsidizing fuel in this country. By introducing electric cars, fuel subsidy will be automatically eliminated and those funds will be channeled into building infrastructure and educating our people. Virtually all industrialized nations have set a date when petrol cars will be banned and Nigeria will be making history by becoming the first in Africa to ban petrol cars in 2035 as proposed by this bill. The prominent features of an electric car is that it is rechargeable. No fuel or gas is required. No pollution. It also provides quite smooth operation, stronger acceleration, and requires less maintenance than internal combustion engines. To charge your electric cars, all the filling stations will be replaced with solar charging stations. Thankfully, this country is blessed with sunlight 365 days in a year and will empower these solar stations. America is no longer building refineries because they know that gasoline is going the way of the VCR. Electric cars are outselling petrol cars as weakness in Norway just a few weeks ago. It makes more sense to build Nigeria's biggest power plant than her biggest refinery. But Mr. President, making it mandatory that everyone should resort to using electric cars at a given date, I think it's, nothing, it's not something that is feasible, it's not something that is doable. And more importantly, Mr. President, in economic sense, Nigeria is an oil-producing country. 
We cannot sit here as a parliament to be encouraging something that will hurt our economy. It should be our responsibility to do everything to frustrate electric, car, electric cars so that we'll be able to sell our oil and gas. I never, I can never quarrel with my leaders and my friends. However, 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 I want some of my colleagues to close their eyes and dream they are in the 21st century. That's all. His catalogue of constituency projects are evenly and widely spread in the three local government areas that make up his senatorial district, namely Braz, Nembe and Ogria. It shows a man determined to impact on his community. If you want to be a great leader, it's your choice. It's just a, it's a question of your orientation. But more important, what educational systems do we have in place to encourage our people to be successful? You know, and then when they get to the workplace, what kind of values do we instill in, in the workplace for people to be productive instead of people to steal? In this economy, in this country, right here, right now, you're either a consumer or you're a producer. We're tired of consumers in political office. So it doesn't matter to me where they come from. You must stop consuming the resources of a poor nation. Now we're less than 100 elephants in Nigeria. Like Lucky don't know we have elephants. Less than 100 elephants. Now, who kills the elephants? Believe it or not, Boko Haram. How do they fund terrorist activities? They kill the elephants, they take the tusk, they sell it in China, they buy AK 47s, and they kill us. Because they have no future, they carry a gun, they carry a knife, they point it at you, they take you out. Because they see you with a beautiful car, and they're on the street. So the, the, the road between Kaduna and Kanu is as dangerous as any road in the country. Fear. Everybody is afraid. You cannot run a 21st century economy where everybody is terrified. Everybody is afraid of being arrested. Everybody is afraid of being investigated. Everybody is afraid that something terrible will happen to them. And as long as you have fear in the system, you will not invest your money in that economy. In addition, names of applicants from the Bayosa East Senatorial District were listed for various training programs with the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, followed by the issuance of recommendation letters to prospective applicants across the Senatorial District by the distinguished senator. Nigeria does not have an automobile policy, first. So in banning vehicles, you don't even have a policy to refer to. That is one. Two, people in government sometimes see businessmen as adversaries not people they must promote. And I will tell you a short story to underscore what I've just said. When I became Director General of NTA in 1999, a lot of people forget that television in Nigeria was only six to eight hours a day. From 1960 to 99, TV was only six to eight hours a day. On my first day at work, I asked my colleagues, why is television six to eight hours a day? They said it was impossible for NTA to transmit 24 hour television. I told them that was an impossibility. Within seven days, I gave Nigeria 24-hour television by choice because that was what I wanted. Now, what is happening here is a lack of imagination, creativity by those who serve government. These people who make these laws, who want to shut down airports, are not qualified for the job they are paid to do. Additional solar lights was proposed and approved for commencement in 20 selected schools and communities. Farms are also set up in three local government areas, while training and crop cultivation in animal husbandry was processed in the senatorial district project in the 2017 budget. Money in layman terms is a coward. You see this currency? It's a coward. This currency only goes to places where there is peace and tranquility. Current, this money will go to Geneva, it will go to Johannesburg, it will go to Accra, it will go to London, it will go to Paris, but this currency is running away from Nigeria. Solar-powered water projects from the Sustainable Development Goals were processed in the 2017 budget, as well as an eye test program for Bayelsa East Senatorial District, and also in the offering the CBN Loan Acquisition for Women and Youth's Land Acquisition for Farming. The Bayasa East Students Grant to Students Selected in the 2017 Amnesty Training Program and the Agricultural Training for Women and Youth Farmers in 2018 and the Purchase of Agricultural Work Tools for Women and Youth Farmers in 2018. The capacity building on the agricultural zonal chain has been proposed for 2019 and also the training and empowerment of youth in various agricultural ventures. 
and after four fulfilling years of effective representation of his constituency in the Red Chambers, Senator Ben Maury Bruce announced he was withdrawing his ambition to return to the Senate for a second term in 2019. In a letter written on the eve of the senatorial primaries of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Ben Murray Bruce thanked his district for giving him the opportunity to serve. His colleagues and indeed many Nigerians will surely miss his in-depth contributions during plenary. Senator Marafa having a party in his new mansion in Zamfara. And he calls all of us to a party. When we get there, he has nine bands playing, nine different songs. Then he tells all of us to start dancing. So, Senator Yahaya Abdullahi gets up to dance and is dancing with Mrs. Olujumi. While they are dancing, while they are dancing, he's listening to nine songs from nine bands at the same time. While they are dancing, he accidentally kicks Mrs. Olujumi she falls down flat on her butt, and there she is. Dino Milai comes in to dance. He's listening to nine songs. He's confused. So when he starts to dance, they think he's doing the shake because he doesn't know what he's doing, like a jellyfish. Now, all the foreign heads of state who come to Senator Marf Marafa's party are listening to nine songs from nine bands at the same time. And they are saying to themselves, why should I attend this party that Senator Marafa is having to showcase his new mansion in Zamfara? So they are saying, okay, if this is happening, maybe, maybe Senator Marafa's house is not where we should be. Maybe they should move to Ghana. In Ghana, they are playing one song, one band, one dance. Then Senator Kwabio says, but please come back to Marafa's house because, because the rate of return on your investment is better in Marafa's house. But the Japanese president says, no, let me go to Ghana. The rate of investment may be lower, but it is quieter. There's one song, one band, one dance. They also say, why did I go to South Africa? One song, one band, one dance. But in Senator Marifa's house, nine bands, nine songs, no dance. I got involved in politics at an early age in America, not Nigeria, because I wanted to understand the difference between American politics and African politics. The first time I heard a, a, a candidate speak was 1976. I was a student at Iowa State University. I went to three universities to get one degree. I loved moving around. <laughs> I was at Iowa State, and Gerald Ford came to speak in 1976. Remember, I was in Iowa. He got up on the podium and he said, I am happy to be in Ohio. And I said, this guy couldn't win an election. He didn't know where he was. And life went on. And I went back, got involved in politics. Jesse Jackson ran in 84, and I attended all his campaign rallies. And I tried to understand how he could motivate people. He had no money. He raised $3 million, got 3 million votes. He used to say to me, Ben, I ran the most cost-effective campaign in the history of the United States of America, 99 cents a vote. <laughs> so when I got back, when I got back, I got involved in politics to see how we run. And I noticed when you run for office in Nigeria, you pay them to vote for you. I said, this don't make no sense. I have to pay you to vote. In America, you, they pay you to run. Now that's a disconnect. <laughs> how can that work? We have, a, we, we have a serious problem. Senator Ben Murray Bruce's work in the political space is not yet done. Ever dreaming, ever aspiring, always busy and willing to improve his immediate community and the world. He stands as a role model to thousands of Nigerian youth, the downtrodden, the hopeless men and women who believe in the future of a greater Nigeria. For Senator Ben Murray Bruce, the curtain on his political odyssey is not drawn, not yet. This is just the beginning.